Welcome back. This video is about putting the insulated rubber roof over this section of our earth sheltered home. It's tricky because of the curvature, but we got it done. The work started while we were still working on the north wall, which was our last video. We needed to finish the roof part before we finish the wall because we need to tuck the edges into the top of the wall. So for what's happening on the left side, go and see the previous video. We're zooming in on what's happening on the right hand side of the screen. We needed to unbury this section that had been covered over the previous winter season. We've not really been careful enough with waterproofing this section of the roof. Probably because we were in a big rush that day with the excavators coming and it just didn't go together quite right. As a result, we've got a little damp spot on the inside ceiling a few hours after every heavy rain, like this one. It would have been easier to get it right the first time, but it'll be even harder if we don't fix it now. So we'll need to pull this part and fix it, and it's good to do it while we're doing the rest of the roof. You can't really see what's going on here, but they're removing the insulation so we can get all the way down to that concrete roof. We'll get back to that task later. In the background, you'll see me spraying some foam between the panels. Let's look at what that is. Uh, this is great stuff. No, they're, they're not a sponsor. Although I have bought enough of their stuff that you could say I was one of their sponsors. I got it because it's the only way to use their wall and floor glue. And I wanted to use it for gluing the insulation to the roof here, to the concrete. Basically, the can just screws right on the gun like this. Then you open up the dial in the back to free the trigger. You can set the max flow rate there. And when you pull the trigger, it's proportional. So you pull a little bit, you get a little thin bead. If you pull more, you you know, all the way, you get a big mess. But if you pull it halfway or whatever, you get this nice ideal bead that's perfect for gluing these panels together. This is the best stuff I found for gluing these layers of insulation together. Uh, product placement. Next, let's explain the plan so you can understand what you're seeing. If you've been watching since the beginning, you'll remember that the mezzanine wall was formed with steel studs and I screwed insulation to the outside. I knew this top section would be outside the house, so I put twice as much insulation in that area. Then we shot the shotcrete on the inside. That worked, but it was a hassle for reasons discussed in other videos. For the outer wall, we simplified things by using wood forms and we shot directly against that, and that was definitely easier. Next, we needed to put the toroidal vault between them. I notched out the insulation and actually I'd placed insulation blocks at spots in the shotcrete wall so I could easily scoop those out also. And that just let the shotcrete really key together better with the previous walls. Then we put in some formwork. There's a whole video about that also to hold up the roof. And then we did the shotcrete from the top at about six inches thick. Now with the shape like this, water could catch in that bottom corner. So I had strategically placed four half inch drain pipes through the wall at the lowest point. This roof here was open to the sky all winter, so we really needed those drains to catch the snow and the rain and, and make sure it didn't form a big pool up there. Then we insulated this outer wall and waterproofed it. That involved a whole bunch of work with furring strips, etc. And that was the previous video on the north wall insulation. And right after the heavy rain that you saw in that last scene, I went up and I took a video showing these draining out. The pipe is a half inch PEX pipe and it runs down the outside of the wall to right down into the French drain system below. All the blue that you see is Blue Max elastomeric waterproofing, but I just consider that the first layer of waterproofing. Once we've added the next few layers, the strain will only be needed if a tiny trickle somehow manages to get through all those other layers and winds up trapped in this crevice. Next, I have to deal with uh, insulating and waterproofing this vault curve. So I'll need to layer things to get a more planar top layer that water can shed right off. So I start with filling the bottom with sand. If any water does get in there, it can move through that drain that we talked about a moment ago. But more importantly, it takes the shape and fills it perfectly. The sand below the insulation just becomes part of the thermal mass of the home. It's also a lot faster to install that insulation when it just sits perfectly on top with no need to trim or shape it to fit. This is 25 PSI insulation, so it can handle a lot of soil and it transfers the loads from above it down through itself through the sand to the arch and then down into the footings. Where the insulation overlaps the concrete or other insulation, I use spray foam to glue it together. I wasn't too worried about the small gaps between the pieces of insulation horizontally. 
If any air is in there, that's also a good insulator. Now we filled this up to the top edge of that wall, and I'll want to run the insulation right over this top. But first I need to attach the rubber pond liner to this inner wall. I'm doing it now so I can get that treated wood strip and the screws in there. Then I can tuck the last layer of insulation in there and totally fill that gap. I pull the rubber down and I overlap the north wall waterproofing. Any water that lands on top of this will drain over the top of the wall and down the outside edge. And then uh, we have lath on the outside edge there and we stuck it right over it. I also squirted some spray foam in that top gap to keep any water from getting in there at any point. I'll add a short stone wall on top of this wall to keep the soil in, but that's in another video. Notice that the insulation envelope is now complete with insulation wrapping all the way around the thermal mass of the home. In most spots it's four or six or more inches thick. On the very top edge of that wall it's at least two inches thick. This top section gets carpeting to protect the rubber and the insulation and then I'll add soil and grass and all those things and that will also provide very good thermal mass and moderation that will keep the house comfortable. Speaking of carpet, we got that by dumpster diving at the carpet installation company. You can also see I'm stockpiled with insulation ready to go up on that roof. The 20 by 50 foot piece of rubber came in a big roll. In our family we save wrapping paper rolls all year and then we have a big like sword fight as part of our Christmas traditions where we try to use them all up until they all break. This one looks like a winner. Okay, back to the time lapse. You can see that gap that we talked about is under the wall, but it also goes up and over the radial vaults. And I'll need to tuck the pond liner for this roof under that wall section. But first I need to clean things up. So this is uh, Blue Max waterproofing. I've used a few thousand dollars worth on this project actually. All the blue that you see is Blue Max painted on really thick. Over the mudroom roof, we are filling that low corner with gravel. The carpet just keeps the layers separated so we don't get sand filling up any cracks in there. If any water gets under the insulation, it can drain out. Then some sand for leveling, and we're really just using that sand to get that first layer right. Then we start filling the gaps with insulation. The goal is to get a nice smooth surface that slopes the water in the right directions. That mess at the far side is the layers of billboard vinyl and pond liner that are coming down from the garage. We're making sure that this lower level of waterproofing tucks under those layers so that the water will shed off. When we glue down the insulation, we put on weights to keep it in place while that glue dries. Sometimes we use our boys as weights. All right, now it's time for the pond liner to be carefully tucked under the garage pond liner. That pond liner overhangs the wall waterproofing by a couple feet on each side, make sure that the water gets shed far away from anything important. Uh, then layers of dumpster diving carpet to protect the pond liner. We'll get back to folding down those garage layers later. That'll be the last step. That black stuff I painted on the wall is special glue for sealing that rubber roof against the concrete. It's really meant to be used on a flat roof membrane system for a big commercial building. I take it another step by screwing in a furring strip along that top edge to make sure that nothing gets behind it. Later, layers of insulation and waterproofing will overlap coming down those radio vaults and over this stuff. That's in another video. Then we move on to the next section. That first black layer I'm putting down is just 6 mil HDPE plastic sheeting, just a, an extra layer of waterproofing. Then we work out the strategy for laying out the insulation. Again, the sand trick is just to get a level surface to start from. Then we cut and layer up the insulation. But I didn't have time before sunset to get it really right, so we just cut it all quick so we could get the rubber measured out, and then we'll, we'll glue, come back and glue it another day. The most important part here was screwing down the top edge of that rubber and then waterproofing that edge. 
back the next day and the rubber layer is flipped back over that radial vault so that we can access this insulation below it. And then I get back to layering up. To save time, I try to cut as few sheets as possible. I toss down full rectangles and then cut the triangles that go between them. In this clip here, you can see Sherry's on the left side putting up stucco over the lath from the last video. Here you can see our plan to form a continuous layer of insulation from the circle part of the house right over that in-between wall and onto the mudroom part. We end up with a smooth sloped insulation layer that won't catch any water. Then we lay the rubber over again and I start to put treated wood strips in that notch in the wall to attach and seal that top edge of the rubber. Since we're fitting a rectangular piece of rubber to a round roof, I use strategically folded pleats to keep things smooth and control the flow of water. I want to avoid cutting this as much as possible and make it one big piece. This angle is a slightly aerial view of the process that we saw in that 2D sketch. You can see that I've already sealed the top of the wall and that waterproofing goes down under the sand toward that internal drain that we showed you earlier. Then we layer up insulation and sand like you saw in that 2D example. And another day is ending. This is July, so the sun actually sets around 9 p.m., maybe a little later. I was sitting at a work computer every day from 8 to 4 or 5 o'clock, and then coming out and getting in some good construction exercise until about 10, and then going home, barely getting into bed by midnight, just so I could do it all the next day. I could have used more sleep, but those two phases of mental work and physical work each day, they work together pretty well. But this is why every little day's work here starts with long shadows and then ends with just a very little bit of work. Then we come back into another day. And this is why I didn't have any evening time for sitting on my computer making these videos and why there's been a big two year gap in the videos. Anyway, another day, another layer. This time the layer must extend right over the wall. I shaped the pieces first so they would be ready to go. But before I can actually glue them in, I need them out of the way while I attach the rubber inside that notch in the wall. This is done with treated furring strips. Then we tuck the insulation we'd already cut under that rubber. And since we're working off a nice planar surface now, and these are nice big planar sheets, it all goes very easily. These last edge pieces go around the fence posts and overhang the wall. Of course, I didn't actually want all the runoff to just go down top of this and then down the face of the building. So I added more insulation in the some areas to shed the water towards the drain spouts on either side. We'll eventually be putting insulation and rubber over all these radial vaults, including the ones on this left side. But first we need to get the pond liner up on the side there. And again, I'm thinking about water control to get it, and that's why I came up with this shape. Any water that gets under the, the layers that are coming above this will hit this layer and be shed in the right direction. Here I'm using an extra strip of pond liner that I had left over to double up the protection over that top edge 
Also note that I'm tucking this rubber under that wall lath, but over the wall rubber liner to try to you know, get all these layers in the right order. The trickiest part is probably sealing around those posts. I might regret that part of the plan eventually, but maybe when those treated posts rot out, there'll be problems. I guess if any water does get in there, it won't actually get into the building. It'll just run down to the footing as well. But anyway, never mind. A little bit of straightening up the insulation, and then again with the glue to seal up these seams. This is uh, the proper stuff that's used to seal seams on that flat roof membrane that I mentioned before. I also rolled out a fancy rubber seal. It's not strictly required, you can just glue the rubber to rubber, but I'm taking this the extra mile whenever I can. So let's slow down and I'll show you one of these seams. I already folded back the overlapping joint and applied glue to both sides. You have to wait a few minutes to let it become tacky. Then you roll out this rubber tape, and I use the J-roller to make sure it's really nicely pushed down against the lower rubber. Clearly this is best done at golden hour. Then I cut the roll to length, and I peel off the backing while I carefully fold that glue overlap back down again. Then J-roll again. It's pretty much instant sealing. I couldn't have separated it again if I tried. The, the glue actually dissolves the rubber a little bit. So when you push them together, they melt together at a molecular level. It's pretty good stuff. Then I J-roll that little overlap on the outside edge of that trim piece, so no dirt will ever get in there or anything. And then I continue on across all the other joints. Here up on the left side is a section of that wall notch that I'd forgotten to make a previous year. No problem, I just cut out the insulation. Then it's time to seal the notches that I've already filled. I filled them up with a treated wood 2x4 strip, screwed that right into the concrete, and then added insulation and lath screw to the wood. And then spray foam for all the cracks, and then we'll stucco over that. Now we're back on a Saturday with all the roof rubber done, and I can finally get back to sealing that overlap on the garage side. Then I lower the layers back down, fill the voids, more carpet, more soil, all that stuff. And since we did this, which this point is a couple years ago. I've had no water issues there at all. In this scene you can see that Sherry's covering those little gaps that we filled in with stucco. Actually she'll do the brown coat over that whole mezzanine wall now but that's another video. And I got back to covering that north wall with insulation and lath. People in the comment section always say, I should have used spray foam over the whole structure. But this is 25 PSI rigid insulation. It's perfect for this simple curvature, and it costs less than one-sixth of the amount of just buying the chemicals for the spray foam. It doesn't even factor in the cost of the equipment, etc. I also don't need to deal with the hazmat situation. That's a mess. Cutting the wall smooth afterward. This stuff's already smooth. If I had some kind of crazy complicated dome with compound curvature in all directions, and lots of money to throw at the problem, I could see the advantage of spray foam, but I'm pretty sure this rigid insulation was the best solution for my simple curvature case. This footage here should probably have gone out with the north wall video that I released last time, but you get it now instead.
I know I've been out of the video making business for a couple of years. My new job keeps me too busy working at my computer all day and I just don't feel like staying in my computer making videos after a day like that. But I'm going to try and get back in the habit of putting some of these together on the weekends. Like and subscribe and comment and all that good stuff. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And thanks for all the encouraging comments I got over my two year hiatus.